Hi, I'm attorney Kelly Longton, founder of Kelly Longton Law, where we provide effective estate planning for everyday families. And today I want to talk to you about assisted reproductive technology and the real impact that it has on estate planning. According to data provided by the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, approximately 1.9% of all infants born in the United States were conceived using assisted reproductive technology. Now, assisted reprodu reproductive technology, what I'm going to refer to as ART, is defined by the CDC as all fertility treatments in which both eggs and embryos are handled. Now, it can involve a number of procedures, the most well-known being artificial insemination, in vitro fertilization, in cryopreservation. So that's just genetic material that's frozen to be used later on. Another related arrangement involves surrogacy, where a woman other than the one who will take on the role of the mother carries and gives birth to a child. Now surrogacy sometimes utilizes the surrogate's egg with the father's sperm, and sometimes the surrogate carries an embryo containing genetic material from one or both of the intended parents implanted via vitro fertilization. Now, ART can provide a solution for those who are struggling with infertility, interested in avoiding passing on genetic risks, or want to store genetic material for later use, as well as for same-sex couples who want to have children. And although it may be surprising, ART is an issue that could have a major impact on estate planning for families seeking to have children through this type of use. Because of the unique issues surrounding art, it is crucial to create or amend your will or revocable living trust to include children who may be born as a result of art. Now laws have been on the books for quite a while, allowing children who are conceived before one parent's death but born afterwards to inherit from the deceased parent, just like children who are born to the deceased person before death. Art has made it possible for children not only to be born after one parent's death, but also to be conceived. So for example, using in vitro fertilization or artificial insemination after the parent's death. Now the laws addressing ART vary widely from state to state. So it's important to meet with an experienced estate planning attorney in your state to ensure that your estate plan will achieve your goals. Now, some states consider children posthumously conceived no later than 36 months after the biological parent's death to be heirs of the deceased parent if that parent left a signed document or other clear and convincing evidence showing an intent for such child or children to be considered his or her heir. Other states require that the child must have been born within two years of the parent's death, while others require a written consent signed by the deceased parent and maintained by the licensed assisting physician, showing a deceased person's intent to be a parent of that child. In other states, for example, Florida, the law includes or excludes posthumously conceived children from inheriting if they're not named in the deceased parent's will. Now, because of these strict requirements, a parent who has neglected to put a well thought out estate plan in place could unintentionally disinherit his or her own child. And as a result, it's crucial for those who are utilizing art or who may use it in the future to specifically include posthumously conceived children in their estate plan. It's also important for those who may eventually be grandparents of such children to specifically express their intention to include them in their estate planning documents. Further, even if this art is not currently being considered for trusts that may continue in existence for more than one generation, those creating the trust should keep in mind that estate planning documents should take into account not only family relationships currently known to them, but also future generations of the family. All family members intended to benefit from the trust, including possible posthumously conceived children, should be explicitly defined in the trust instrument itself. 
So what happens if the child is born long after someone has passed away? Well, it is important to keep in mind that a posthumously conceived child could potentially be born many years after one of his or her parents pass away. In some circumstances, this could create uncertainty in the administration of an estate or a trust. For example, if the deceased parent makes a gift to a class of beneficiaries, such as all of his or her children, including posthumously conceived children, what would happen if the personal representative has already distributed the gifts to the children living at the time of the administration, but another child was born several years later? Would the personal representative have to reacquire part of the gifts from the children to provide for the posthumously conceived child? To address this potential problem, it may be necessary to establish a time limit in which a posthumously conceived child must be conceived or born in order to inherit money or property, even if such a child is expressly included as a beneficiary of a will or a trust. Now let's talk about whether or the question if the child is eligible for Social Security survivor benefits. Well, in 2012, there was a case, Astro v. Capato, the United States Supreme Court decided that a child who is conceived after the death of his or her biological father is only entitled to Social Security dependent benefits if the child was entitled to inherit from him under state law. Now, as mentioned, as I just mentioned, state law varies widely, so it's important for those who may become parents of posthumously conceived children to express their intention that those children should inherit from them in a carefully drafted estate plan and to comply with any other requirements under state law. For example, maybe by providing a written documentation of the parent's intention to be maintained by that assisting physician. The law regarding surrogacy varies from state to state. Now, most states permit surrogacy, but a few prohibit such arrangements. Where it is permitted, state law sometimes requires that the intended parents have wills, naming a guardian for their minor children, in order for a surrogacy agreement to be finalized. In situations involving surrogacy, it is crucial to carry out all of the necessary processes to establish legal parentage as some states allow rebirth or allow pre-birth orders, but others require adoption proceedings after the child is actually born. Now, when there has been a decision to use art, those involved should enter into a well-drafted written agreement, not just one of those standard forms that are provided by the medical facility that's involved, but a written agreement that clearly states who will have custody and control of the genetic material involved in the event of death or divorce or other unforeseen consequences. Now, those who have decided to use cryopreservation may wish to give their genetic material to a spouse or a partner if they pass away before it's actually used. Further, as I had mentioned previously, if the material is intended to be used posthumous conception, it is important for them to specifically state their intention to provide for a posthumous child or children, because there may be substantial costs to store the genetic material and may be prudent to set aside a gift to pay those expenses during the estate administration process or to specify trust distributions for this purpose. Now, if you're considering art, you may want to include a statement of your intent and instructions regarding the genetic material in your living will and your power of attorney to express your wishes regarding the extraction and use of genetic material for conception while you're still living, but perhaps unable to express your wishes due to an illness or an incapacity or an unconsciousness. So art has been a wonderful solution for many families that have struggled with infertility or other issues, but that want to have children. Now we can help you ensure that children born as a result of art have a financially secure future, as well as help you think through whether you wanna make a gift of your genetic material if you pass away and before it can be used. So give us a call if you need to, uh, we can set up an appointment for you so that we can design the best estate plan for you and all of your children. So we're happy to uh, meet 
with a client uh, located in Massachusetts and New Hampshire because that's where we're licensed, either virtually or uh, by phone or in person, whatever makes the most amount of sense. So I want to thank you all for watching. I'm attorney Kelly Longton, founder of Kelly Longton Law, where we focus solely on estate planning and providing effective estate planning for everyday families.